I jump to the third presentation from Jorgen Schiebe, um, who is from the National Library of uh, Norway, where he's a project owner for several uh, digital development uh, projects. Um, Jorgen has a background from over 20 years in developing digital platforms from information learning and education and also experience with analog and digital publishing. And today he's going to present a service that is called Maken, uh, a user experience framework based on artificial intelligence. So Jorgen, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen with you. You see my screen empty right now? Yes, I think and so. Do you, and do you hear me okay? It's empty, right? Yeah, but it's not now, right? Yeah, perfect. Good. Um, let me see. I have to reorganize some windows here, but uh, I probably won't be able to see all of you when I talk, but uh, let's see how this goes anyway. Um, yeah, greetings from Oslo, Norway. Uh, my name is Jürgen Schieberg, and I am probably the person in this meeting with the least insight and experience with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this presentation will be quite high level, but like others who have a little or no insight, I have lots of things to say, so let's get started. Together with some uh, colleagues at the National Library of Norway and a digital agency called The Koda, we have made a web app called Marken, which uses AI to suggest books or images uh, with the help of a similarity algorithm. Let's see here. Um, Marken is a somewhat ambiguous Norwegian word uh, that can mean uh, the matching other, like a glove to another glove. Uh, it can mean similar uh, or even identical, like two drops of water. And sometimes it can also be used for the spouse or the partner. But for us, Marken is a discovery engine to find similar books and similar images. Based on the pixels of the images, Marken finds related images. And based on the text of a book itself, Marken finds books that have some resemblance to each other. In 2020, this was our marching order from the head of the library. In creating Marken, we wanted to utilize some of what our machine learning department, the AI lab, has learned over several years of experiments, prototyping and tool building. Returning participants to Fantastic Futures may remember our AI librarian Nancy as one of these experiments named after the famous public librarian Nancy Pearl. The AI lab has previously worked with many digital material types and from Markin, we decided to focus on books and images. We possess a huge and growing uh, digital collection of media in the Norwegian languages. As such collections grow, discover discoverability becomes harder Metadata may be missing or insufficient, and it may be difficult to search within the actual content. We wanted to see if AI could help us make this experience more useful, interesting, or fun. So we started building Marken. But what does Marken do? The Marken front page has a search field that works like the regular search in our digital library. It has a small set of hand-picked objects for the season. And it has a set of randomly picked objects from the collection. And let's say we pick one of the random objects that you see here. Let's say the, yeah, it's a bit tiny here, but the, the person with the, a haystack in front of it uh, in the top uh, group at the bottom. Um, this is the image. We're not really looking for a needle in a haystack today, but when the starting point is an image with a haystack, Marken has found other hay haystacks for us. When it comes to books, let's say I have searched for the term mushroom, which is SOP in Norwegian. If I pick, uh, pick a book about the biology and classification of mushrooms, Markin returns other books for people forge, foraging for mushrooms. But if I pick a recipe book about mushroom dishes, Markin returns other recipe books. And it's always fun to watch photographs of proud men holding fish. So how do the mechanics of marking work? We have ingested vectors for half a million books and half a million images into an elastic search index. Through what is called an embedding model, we have transformed the books and images into long lists of numbers that hold the content of the objects themselves. In processing, images of cats will get similar lists uh, of numbers to other images of cats because, well, cats are cat-shaped. 
vectors of images of long-haired heavy, heavy cats would have similar lists of numbers with vectors of images of short-haired thin cats, but they would be quite different for those uh, from those of cars. We can do the same with the text of books. I have for this visualization picked some wooden domino pieces to represent the books, in this case some Norwegian Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter in, uh, editions, and a box uh, to represent the processing and some sticky notes to hold the vectorized objects, which are now numbers. So we can mathematically, ma mathematically embed these lists of numbers into a 2048 dimensional vector space and calculate distances between them all in 2048 dimensions. But as uh, 2048 dimensions is a bit hard to grasp for a human used to four dimensions at the max, let's say we collapse the vectors into a two dimensional coordinate, uh, coordinate system with an x-axis and a y-axis, like the one you see here from my kitchen floor at home using some tape, some sticky notes and some domino pieces. We can choose a few of them. And each of these could, for example, be a book, let's say Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. In its nearest vicinity, we find three other books that might be related somehow in content. And it is likely that we find some other Harry Potter titles nearby. Which is exactly what Markin does if you ask it to present similar books to this edition of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. You have more Harry Potter uh, stuff in this. Uh, View. But I really came here to talk about how we approached the users when develop, developing uh, Markin. In parallel to developing Markin, we worked to understand how our digital services were being used, in particular the digital library. Through data collection and anal analytics from our digital services, and from user surveys and also some user testing, we had a general understanding of how our user segments, uh, uh, understanding of our user segments. But even though we had some insights, we needed to sharpen our focus and concentrate on our main users and their challenges. So we ran a workshop called uh, Lean Canvas uh, to help us identify priority user groups we should aim to understand better to identify challenges that they may, may have that we might help solve, and to understand more of our own competition, our surroundings, and our own communication and impact. In, this insight could be used to build hypotheses around, uh, about our users, which we organized as personas. Personas is a much used technique in service design with the purpose of defining hypotheses and exploring our prejudices about our users and their challenges. So these four individuals moved in with us for several weeks. And even if they don't really exist, they could tell us where and how to look for the answers we needed. And that was useful because uh, in the next phase, we were to talk with real people about real challenges in their work life because we needed to know which jobs to be done might be relevant for Markin to do for its users. So we recruited a user panel and we did eight one hour interviews one over a digital meeting, meeting platform and we recorded and logged the interviews. This is an anonymized, anonymized um, screenshot from one of the interviews. And then uh, during, after the interview, we made an appointment to meet them again a week later when we were to test a version of uh, Markin hands-on with the users. And we used what they had told us in the interviews to design relevant tasks for them to solve in Markin. We asked them to share their screen with us and we also recorded and logged the user tests to study them closely. And we asked the user panel to try different things in Markin and we learned a lot of things. We learned that um, the test users didn't understand Markin at first glance. We learned that AI-driven suggestion is kind of difficult to communicate, especially for books. We learned that uh, people's intuitive understanding of Markin's AI is really colored by their previous experience with the ordinary search in digital content and metadata. And we learned that similarity between books is often perceived as topic similarity. This book is similar to this because of their topic, even if that's not, maybe not the, how the AI uh, thinks. We learned that similarity between images is easier to grasp, perhaps because people have seen it before or because it's more visually explicit. 
And we learned that the user needs a nudge to look below the fold in the user interface and see that there's more content on the page. Nobody scrolls, so we had to kind of make the interface more compact to have more of the beef or the actual content visual uh, in the first screen to uh, land in uh, what the browser shows immediately. But we also learned that marking can be fun or useful. One author told us that it was, this was similar to browsing uh, the bookshelves of a physical library, discovering the books that were on each side of the books that uh, he or she came to, to borrow or to read. Another author said that this was a really good way to discover a wider selection of secondary sources. And an ancestry researcher said that it would be uh, have been really useful to use one of his or her own images as input into Markin and get similar images on the flyback. And we also learned that newspaper, newspaper content in the similarity service would be super handy. But where are we now? We are currently in a data collection mode. Um, we launched officially mid-November, right before Fantastic Futures last year. And, our, uh, and uh, we are now trying to learn more about our users on a bigger scale. And the numbers aren't really huge yet. Uh, we, compared to our digital library, it's really small, but, but we hope to see some patterns emerging over time. We use Google Analytics to measure traffic uh, and our user segments and the user's behavior, uh, behavior in general. We use Google Data Studio to make sense of all the big numbers that we collect. And we use Hotjar to understand what the user are actually doing on the pages of the application. When collecting data for developing and running digital services, data protection is paramount. We have to make sure that we don't collect or store data we don't need. We must assess the data protection in the project and the service for the people we interviewed and for the users of the actual service. Uh, we had to collect consent from the users we spoke with to record, store, analyze, and share what we've learned. And when working with users, we must respect the users and their rights and privileges. And because marking is still an experiment, we haven't really decided exactly how we will bring it further, but there are a few possible directions. We could integrate the marking features uh, or learnings into other services, and I'll show you a screenshot, a screenshot of an example in a second. We could extend similarity discovery to collections other than books and images. We could introduce similarity hits in newspapers, but the newspapers being both images and text at the same time, they're very different from either books or images. And then for newspapers, maybe articles or events or topics may be irrelevant for similarity more than the entire newspapers themselves. We can maybe train the AI to recognize named entities across vast collections of different media types. We could maybe let the user bring their own content and get similarity suggestions for it. Or what if we use generative machine learning to create new synthetic or fake cultural heritage? What would be the feasible preservation and presentation strategy for such material? Artist Marion Carré, who gave one of the keynotes at Fantastic Futures 21, has shared interesting perspectives on this question. I will round up this with a little screenshot of a proof of concept that my colleague Javier has made. Uh, this is just uh, an experimental Firefox plugin for our main digital library, but we have uh, inserted it into the digital library service and using the similarity engine to add similarity value to, similarity value to the regular library search. So from working with Markin, I believe we will get used to and learn to appreciate, uh, appreciate what AI can add to the user experience and supplement how we work with the content, both as individuals and as library institutions. To me, it feels like mach machine learning and AI over time will become second nature. Thank you very much for your time. And if there's time, I, I'm happy to answer questions in the chat or here. Thank you a lot.